Boston is loaded with you got to be on. I mean, come on, Stephen Good Wright, guys. you, Lenny Clark, Jay Leno, Jay, Conan Jay O'Brien, Lowe. Louis C.K., uh, Dane Cook, um, Billy Burr. It, I mean, it, it goes on and on. You know, so, you know who I hung out with that was one of the joys of my life. I, I hung Zsa out with Zsa Zsa Joining me right now, ladies and gentlemen, if you're a fan of uh, Louis C.K., Billy Burr, Joe Rogan, myself, um, Dennis Leary, this guy was our inspiration, Mr. Steve Sweeney, the godfather of Boston comedy. He's the reason we all got into it. He, uh, I've never seen a guy kill harder in my life to this day when I first walked into Stitch's Comedy Club. He has a movie that the Farley brothers are involved in. Uh, that's out. It's already out. Sweeney killing Sweeney. Please welcome uh, a, a legend, Steve. not not just a Boston, <laughs> not Steve. just not just a Boston <laughs> legend, a comedy legend, Steve Sweeney, Stevie Steve. Boy. What's going on? Listen, I got to tell you, I've actually done all of you you guys podcast. I didn't even know what it was a podcast. You know, it's something to do with a pond or whatever. But <laughs> I got to tell you. I am so proud of you because, you know, it's a weird thing when I meet guys that know you, Nick. Yes, sir. They try to be you. Like, I'll say. If they're say, Jewish. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm a friend of Nick DiPaolo's. And I say, yeah, Nick's a great guy. And then they'll go, he's a fucking asshole. You know, because they know you. and they, They're trying to be funny, but they're not you. Yeah. It's like Nick without the humor. Yeah, I don't see that story helping this show at all. But, you know, you <laughs> Well, whatever I can do to. All right, let me. Uh, if you're a white guy and you're defending, uh, you know. Uh, no, this is the, all the all your friends on the North Shore. They talk like yeah, you. Yeah, I'm a fucking. They're fucking assholes. Okay, they're fucking living with their <laughs> parents. They have the balls to go out on their own, so they can, you know, they can kiss no, my ass. They they love you, but they don't know how to say it. I love you, and I know how to say it. Exactly right, Steve. I, 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 I told this, we tried to do this, and we had some technical problems before, yeah, but technical. i gotta, I got to tell yeah. this story. I, I was a bar back at Stitches Comedy Club in Boston. First of all, my buddy Murph calls me. We were still in high school. He said, let's go into the city and uh, see Steve Sweeney, who he was, you were big on radio doing Mayor Flynn and stuff. We went in on a hot summer night into Stitches, and you it was your show, and we were just blown away. You actually picked on me. I was sitting in the audience. You're like, look oh. at this pretty fucking boy. You know, made, you made some <laughs> Italian <laughs> reference, and I just sat there yeah. scared of shit. But I left that night going, oh, my God. This, I said, this is the funniest person I've ever seen, and I wanted to do it. Went to college, came home, had a day job, still wanted to pursue comedy. Uh, eventually did an open mic or two. I was th I, I was walking down the street on St. Patrick's Day. I still wasn't a comic yet. I was a bar back. I'm thinking about Steve Sweeney. I'm drunk. I got lost on the T. I was over on Huntington Avenue. I'm thinking about Steve Sweeney because I want to get into comedy. Literally thinking about him. Who comes wandering out of a bar, which I know that doesn't sound that unusual, a guy named Sweeney in Boston coming out of a bar on St. Patrick's right. Day. But he, yeah. he, you literally come out on the sidewalk. We bump into each other. I, it was like if you wanted to be a baseball player and Ted Williams showed up at you. It was the oddest thing. I don't know if I believe in God or not, but that that's one of the times I'm like, oh, my God, this might be meant to be. And we went in. You bought me a Guinness beer. He swelled that. And, and I, I, it was unbelievable. You know what, Nick? I, I always remembered you for two reasons. You're a very funny guy. You're a good guy, but you're also a great audience. And like comedians, we love people that will laugh at us, right? right? That's exactly you know? right. No, but I suspect underneath, because I've been on your other show when you were on that other thing. Yep. I, I suspect <laughs> underneath this very masculine, beautiful exterior, <laughs> if I could say that, there's a very sensitive, not exactly feminine, but something underneath. <laughs> hey, I'll listen, show you what I'm wearing underneath these jeans. <laughs> Can yes. I try a concept out on you? Go ahead. Doctor Sweeney, I don't, I, I don't know about you, but I'm overly sensitive. I take everything the wrong way. Me too. Me too. Thin skinned. But, thin skinned. But that has given <laughs> given me the ability to like come back at people. You know what I mean? He, you just hit it on the head. I have, yeah. I've, I've thought this in my head a million times when people ask me about being a comic, and it's exactly right because your radar is always up. You're almost a little paranoid. 
And when absolutely, and, and and you do, I'll tend to take stuff wrong. Even when I look on Twitter real quick, I'll I'll, I'll jump down somebody's throat, then realizing that they were actually agreeing with my point. They were agreeing with you, and but, they were saying something nice. I go into a gig, and I, Joe, who Joe's a fantastic guy, Joe Rogan, yep. but he kind of took issue with what I said. But sometimes this can be a humiliating job. Sure. And and it hasn't been for me for a lot of years. But during the beginning, when it was humiliating, yeah. doing bachelor parties where they collect the money after you're done and right. just one horror <laughs> show after another, right. playing for rock bands and people throwing shit, there's something that goes off in my head. Like the other day, I did a gig for a benefit. I didn't know who anybody there. And the thing goes off right in my head. This is going to suck. As soon as I walk in, this is going to suck. That's what and, makes you a comedian. <laughs> it's, isn't that true? And then once you get into it, it's great. It's I always mean, once fine. You get up there, but yeah. you're always waiting for, well, that's what I do. I always, uh, I think it's, I always think the worst. So when it's not the worst, I'm pleasantly surprised. That's just being a realist. I am so negative, Steve. I was voted, this is why my friends say, yeah, he's an asshole. I was voted class pessimist my senior year in high school. It was really? one of the, is that true? It was, you yes, make- a superlative they made up for me in the yearbook, class fucking pessimist. By the way, that microphone is the biggest microphone I've ever seen. It's like I you, know, but this is what we... <laughs> it's like you're talking uh, You're talking to something from Star Wars, one of the fucking characters. Uh, or, uh, this, is, this is a... <laughs> what is that, a thermos? The fuck you... This is a Larry King microphone. <laughs> hey, listen, uh, this is what we got. We don't want to go through what we went through the last time, right? Right. Right. No, it's this is beautiful. It's All a great right. okay. setup. I appreciate you doing that. So it, if you guys want to look at my high school yearbook... Yeah, you're all coked out. Beating people up. <laughs> he was a no, mess this, when I met him. This guy had snow oh, on his nose, pr- bloodshot pr- eyes. He was mean. <laughs> I saw him threaten the owner of Nick's. The, here's my favorite Sweeney story. I'm going to say it, okay? Oh, man. It's a Friday night. I'm a new comic. Uh, it's like yeah. one in the morning. Nick's is closing up. You <laughs> show up at the door. You were somewhere across the city, banging on the door, and fucking you're, you're furious about something. Jackie Gateman's there. You come up, you and Jackie Gateman, who was a, a bit of a tough guy who ran the place, you get in an argument with him. I'm sitting like three stools over. Uh, I hear him saying that you, I hear him yelling about money. You go, and this is what you said. <laughs> Jackie, I'll smear that big Jew nose all over your fucking face. Oh, my God. And that's that's where I got up, and I, I pretended to be busy. I went in the back of the room. I was, like, all nervous. I go, what is going to go on here? Oh, my and, God. And uh, you were a little wild, Stevie. I mean, uh, no, I it. never I, ne- I never said Jew. I never said that. Oh, did you ever? Don't. No, I didn't. Now, hold I, on. You can come I, on here say, and say, my friends I, call I, me an I, asshole, but I can't say that, that you said I, the word I, Jew. I'll tell you exactly what I said. I'll spread that nose all over your face, but I never use any ethnic stuff. It, it actually wasn't Jew. It was worse than that. But uh, I cleaned it up. I thought I was cleaning it up by saying Jew. It was an actually derogatory. You know what? You you just <laughs> lost me about a million France. I never said that. All right, listen. Oh, my God. What a phony. What are you talking about? This is why we love you. You were a little out of your mind. You were drunk and cold, but you're not like I that. Know, but, but I'm not anti-Semitic. No, I think you were kidding. Jackie laughed, and but oh, yeah. I, got, I got all nervous. Me and Jack go back and forth because he would always say to me, you know, you Irish drunk and all this. And right. That's what we did in Boston. I know. It was brutal. Yeah. But I, I've had this amazing experience watching. I always say this. If you open for me, you're going right to the top. And I'll get to watch you go by me. And I'll be filled with jealousy and hatred. So congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were the guys I'm happy for. People well, that... People that get up and say, you know, I've been in the business close to 73 days, and Jesus Christ, nothing's happened. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, my God. Do I ever? I, I was one of those guys, you know? I was like, uh, when's the Tonight Show know? coming? Yeah. Yeah, but, exactly. But we're all like that in the beginning. I know, but, but but you were at the, Steve was at the, at the you know, the foundation of when comedy started at the Ding Ho in Boston, right? The but Chinese you know what? It, it was me, but it was Barry Cremins. It right. was Don Gavin. It was Lenny Clark. Right. Mike Donovan, yeah. Bill Campbell. There were a lot of guys. There were guys that started before me. It's just, uh, I've always been old. It's like, <laughs> it's like well, I was never young. I've always been the same. I Colin Quinn saw me about a year ago, and he says, Jesus Christ, you look the same. And he's like had this disappointing look on his face. <laughs> By you, the way. You look way you, better now. I, 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 I 
the first 10 years I knew you, your eyes were bloodshot, blood red, uh, and you, in, you know, and you were always a little fucking angry, but now you're like a professor, and uh, yeah, you, you, your you eyes know are what, clear. You know what actually happened to me? Yeah, Visine. I, I, yeah, I was the Visine king. <laughs> My eyes were as red as the American flag. <laughs> Listen, I've heard them all, but... Um, I don't. I know you have no, never done cocaine, and I'm, I wouldn't ask you if you've done it. I did but in the '80s. My eyes would involuntarily. They'd be like, everything was intense. Nick, I really, and it'd be very emotional. That's Nick, how you looked. That's I really, how. You, I really love you, Nick. You look, you look like one of Jeff Dunham's puppets right now. Let, let's talk about war. Let's talk <laughs> about operations in your family. Yeah, Nick, you're that, really a funny that's guy. That's how you looked. And let me tell the story real quick. Uh, the, the day I ran into him was St. Patrick's Day. We had drinks and yeah. blah, blah. Next thing you know, the sun's going down. Steve wants to go to Southie. I don't know why. He doesn't tell me why. I'm a naive suburb kid. We, yeah. get, in a, we get in a cab. We go to Southie Avenue B or whatever on St. Patrick's Day night where they beat people up regardless of your race just because it's St. Right. Patrick's yeah. Day. Stevie gets out of the cab. He's not out of the cab two minutes. Three guys come around the corner. They look like they're out of central casting for Southie. Yeah. One of them yeah. had a leather jacket, red hair. Yeah. And they... Steve hands me his watch, and I go, I'm so naive. I go, why is he giving me his watch? He must really like me, this guy. And then it, and these guys start chasing him up the street, and the cab driver takes off, and I'm yelling at the cab driver, you can't leave him here. And he's like, I'm not going to get the shit kicked out of me. And, no. and you ran all the way to the north end. And by the way, he was there. Steve, he told me uh, he was there to pick no, up. No, I didn't, I didn't exactly run. What I did is you, I went around the but, corner. I went Just like in the movie. Tell the people the where corner. you were going, why we were there. It was uh, an after-hours joint. Whitey Bulger had one. <laughs> after, but, a Whitey but, Bulger after-hours yeah, joint. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was quite an event. You, I'll tell you. I'll tell you how fucked up that was. I would go to that place, and I was actually Nick up for Saturday Night Live, the cast, right? Yes. So everybody's coked out of their minds. You know, nobody listens to anybody. Right. And I'm with these idiots. And I said, I'm up for Saturday Night Live. I want to get one of those T-shirts. I know, but I'm actually <laughs> up for the show. You know, I want one of the, I went down there. I saw one. I had no T-shirts. So I went and said, friend of mine got a Letterman T-shirt. Oh my God! You know, that was he ran. You ran all the way to the North End, and you had like dress shoes on. I remember. You telling me. I didn't run. I keep telling you. Oh, you didn't run? Oh, I went around the corner, waited for them, then waited for this oh, other okay. guy. He was going to help me, and it turned into this sort of thing. But yeah. Any, we, anyways, you didn't get SNL. <laughs> no, what, what happened was, if I remember, if I can put the pieces together of that evening. That's going to be hard. You disappeared, which was a good move, actually. I, you I you like keep implying that, and I didn't. I did just the opposite. Then he, Monday morning, he sees me at Stitches. I mean, Monday night, I'm a bar yeah. back. He punches me in the chest. Said yeah. you left me for dead, you little guinea bastard. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You know, you're making me sound like this. You were. You were a racist. fucking monster. You no, were a green monster. You're making me sound like this racist bastard. It was no, all no, no, an Irish point. guy from Southie. Why would I fucking imply that? I know. Nick, uh, now, we, we, as Nick DiPaolo fans, and I really mean that. I know you do. You know, you know, you know why I like you? Because you're so different from what I do. Like Stephen Wright, you know what I mean? He's got his own world, and you've got your own thing uh, that you right, do. Right, right. But when I called you, yeah. and you were at the airport, and you said, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm actually moving to Georgia. Yeah. I, I thought for sure it was a divorce or something. Or, or you had flipped, or you're going to a mental institution, or something. People are still saying that. <laughs> They're going, what are you? Is, you? is your wife from Georgia? No, she's not. She had relatives down here, you know, that I've never met years and years ago, or uh, her grandfather or whatever, but who's passed away or whatever. But, why why um, did you pick Georgia? Because it's uh, it's very cool and there's no humidity in the summertime. <laughs> no, it's Isn't it incredible? I was down yeah. there in Virginia and I went to one of these Civil War sites. Yeah. And I had you grew up in the north, you said Civil War, yeah, it was in the textbooks, whatever. Yeah. But when you're down south, you realize, oh my God, they fought here. Right. You know, and you can see why people still kind of feel it. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, but here's the other thing, Stevie. Um, you know, for I have this right wing, whatever the hell, I moved to a town that's 55% black and 39% white. 
and it's mu the people are much more integrated down here. You don't feel there's not that underlying tension like when you're in Boston and New York between the ra the liberal cities that you know have been fucked up by liberal politicians trying to handle the race issue for the last 40 years that have butchered it completely. Down here, blacks and whites, you see all the black and white people having dinner together, having bread. You don't see that up north, and and uh, uh, you know I, I this I, I just absolutely love this town. It's just uh, you, you know. I had a guy across the street from where I live, excuse me for cutting you off, and he was from South Carolina, he was just visiting. And I had this little pleasant conversation, and he said to me, you have a nice day. And he meant it, it was like, <laughs> the fuck is wrong with this guy? Isn't I that... figured he just out of the nut house. He says, no, I... and he was like, sincerely wanted me to have a nice day. It's pleasant. And, and, Pleasant, and, absolutely. and the taxes are way, I was playing, you know, I was living in New York City, Westchester County. I was getting raped tax wise and, and, and the city's a mess now. And, uh, it's, it's much, you know, me, I'm like you, I'm a high strung Bostonian. I, I need my life simplified. I don't want to be in traffic. I'm oh. always in a rush. If I go to a, if I go to a, a Dairy Queen and there's two, I got this from my dad when we were kids, we go to Dairy Queen. If there were two people in line, he goes, we're not going in there. He'd fucking blow right by <laughs> And that's how I am. And people, it's nice down here. I, yeah. I drive to work. There's no traffic. There's three cars. In the, I go to the airport later today. I'm going to the airport. It takes me 19 minutes as opposed to an oh hour in New York God. City. I can park anywhere I want. That's, I, I'm at that you age. Know what, you, know? you know what I said on the radio today? Because I have my own show. Yeah. You want to talk about an old crank. Now, the, the Bruins have the potential to win the Stanley Cup, which yes. would mean the Red Sox, the Patriots, and the Bruins. That's right. And all I can say is, Jesus Christ, another freaking parade? Talk about a <laughs> cranky old guy, you know. Everything is about traffic. I hear the Boston Marathon. All I can think of is, oh, I can't drive through Boston. Remember Teddy Bergeron used to do that bit about, uh, he was talking about, uh, you know, picking up a girl. He, he said you could put Mother Teresa in, in Boston traffic and she'd be losing her <laughs> shit after like three seconds. Losing she, her shit, I know. He, he, he'd do a bit about picking a girl up on a blind date and he's like, she gets in the Kamai. He's like, you look very nice tonight and... Uh, yeah. You know, uh, I really feel for you, and I hope we take this to the next level. I've picked out a beautiful restaurant I'm going to go to. You're going to love the – Will you get the fuck out of the way, you <laughs> cocksucker? That's a red line. That's a funny – that's a funny bit. Bergeron He's a funny is, uh, guy. He's brilliant, and so are you. Let's talk – let's get into the movie here, Sweeney Killing Sweeney. You get heavy hitters like the Fairley Brothers producing oh. this. Well, they, uh, and Chris Lisa, Meyer, who worked with them, and, P yeah. and Peter came, and Bobby came. They both loved it. But I got my man Stephen Wright, Jonathan Katz, and without stroking you, one of the best scenes in the movie is your scene, and people love it. It was so. As a matter of fact, Mark, who set up this thing, what yep. do we call these things? Uh, we call these uh, streaming live uh, fucking interviews. No, I, the, I the no handles, idea. and I, I, you know, uh, I think Skype. I love it's Skype. It's Skype. Okay. Yeah. His, <laughs> two, two his old guys. Fa his favorite, his favorite scene, and a lot of favorite, people's favorite scene is the Nick DiPaolo scene. But you know, when you came down and you drove all the way from New York and you did my movie, and yeah, meant the, meant the world to me. You know, meant the world but, to you. How about my idol? You're the reason I get in this business, and I don't know if I should love you or hate you for it, but you're you know. the reason I get in this. And to have Steve Sweeney. Say, I want you in my movie. I mean, it was a no-brainer. I mean, you know. Does that, does that mean you'll be in the next one? Uh, yeah. Is it going to be a sequel? Talk to, what's talk a, to my agent, huh? Yeah. What's the, what's the sequel going to be? Sweet. Oh, there's no sequel. No? We're, we're doing another movie, though. Um, they made a movie about you. at the and, but, but, you, but, but guys like Jonathan Katz. Brilliant. You know, Tony B., Frank Santorelli. Solid, Lenny, funny guys. Lenny, Lenny Clark, those guys are great, you know. Those where, guys where was are... Gavin? Was he not invited? Are you guys fighting? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody said Gavin insists I didn't ask him. I asked him five times. <laughs> you know how John likes his <laughs> likes his take, and he'd bring it up every time. You know, these I guys. Did Don, I did Don Gavin's. Uh, they did this thing for him, rose slash tribute. Yeah. And I did a thing. Uh, because he likes, he's a weirdo. He likes folk music. And I had the, the audience sing <laughs> Michael Rowe, the boat ashore. It was a nice bit. <laughs> and, uh, at the end of the thing, you know, all of these things are too long, but he saw me and he says, how come you weren't up there? I said, Don, I was up there an hour ago. You know, come on. Did he have his thermos of black Russians with him? He did. Yeah. Funny. He's, Gavin is funny as they come. Literally another genius. These guys are local guys. 
And uh, but Stevie started it all, man. I mean, Joe Rogan, you had you on because we I never saw anybody kill so hard. And I love we did a comics come home with Dennis Larry a few years ago. And you did a you did a bit. It was local references. You go that bit will go about as far as Boylston Street. Boylston Street. <laughs> that's why I'm still here. Yeah, yeah but like you, for, you have a movie made about you. Come for, on. For example, uh, what's your producer name? Jason. Jason. Very he doesn't know who I am. How old is he? He's a, he'll be 14 on Thursday. So <laughs> he's got a nice tight Jesus. ass. But uh, yeah, no, he's he like, how old are you, Jace? 25. The, ask him. Does he know who I am? The caps on your teeth are 24, for Christ's sake, Stevie. Uh, d- did you know who he was? Not until Nick DiPaolo. Not until he met me. His I'm mother, gonna... however, has a poster of you in her bedroom. Now, listen. Oh, I want to meet his mother. Uh, you know how annoying this is? I did Bill Burr's uh, podcast, which was fantastic. Yep. But the guy who runs the studio. Yeah. I mean, I I don't mind people not knowing me, but don't call me Mike. I said to the guy, you know, he, he says, Mike, Mike. And here, I said, listen, it's Steve. Bill used to open for me. He says, oh, yeah, OK. And then his assistant <laughs> called me Mike. And I said, this is getting a little much. At least get the name right. So take a page from them, Jason. <laughs> I called him something else the other day. I called him but, Tommy. Tommy. But, you know, getting back to the drinking. Yeah. This slow motion of Nancy uh, Pelosi. Yes. You know, where she sounds like she's drunk. If yeah. you watch it, she kind of turns into Keith Richards. You know, well, you know, Donald Trump and then you know, Mick Jagger. <laughs> Isn't that true? <laughs> I now that you say that she she uh, and Trump's catching all kinds of fl- oh they left the Facebook left that up that proves that that's how he stole the election with the help of Facebook it's so crazy um, but uh, politically hey how about this how about these ahead. guys that no longer wear jackets like Pete Buttigieg and you know they wear the shirts so now they're showing the hardworking guys and I know. There's such Come on, phony. Cut the shit. There's cut such the shit. Elizabeth Warren. She's like a librarian on cocaine, isn't she? Just picture her. You know, shh, this is the science fiction section. Ooh, get out of the mystery <laughs> section. She seems like it's something you'd she, vote for, though, because she's from Cambridge. She's a real hippie. She seems me, like you. I'm going to tell vote you a her. true story. How do you vote, Steve? I I lean both ways, actually. Uh, Not I'm sexually. How do you vote? I know, but I'm going to tell you Elizabeth Warren's story because I was banned from the Quincy St. Patrick's Day celebration for saying this. She got up. I can't stand her, number one. Right. Scott Brown happens to be a friend of mine. That's irrelevant. I like but that she guy. got up and she tried to be funny, whatever. So I got up after her, about 500 people there, and I said, Sorry I'm late. When Elizabeth was up, I was shooting heroin in the parking lot up my ass because every word she says just – and that was it for me. They booted you? If, if, there, is, if there is one person that I can't stand yes. in all of them, yeah. it's her. It's her. What bugs you about her other than she's big-breasted? You know what? I don't have to go to this dirt with you here, Nick. What don't you like about her? All right, I'm gonna. Number one, she gives me an, angina just watching her. But also, if you want to look objectively at somebody using a minority status who is not a minority, and then professing to preach to the rest of us about equality, right? Give me a break, okay. and no one calls her on it. Well, All right, is that enough? Yeah, you define. Oh, you want you, you define that almost every liberal uh, I can think of in politics. They do as I say, not as I do. That's why we hate them. They they live. I don't. Hate they them. live in. Uh, I'm not talking old school liberals. I'm talking new progressives. I like Louis C.K.'s liberal. Joe Rogan's liberal. They can look at both sides of an issue. I'm talking that's about, me. Th- and that's you exactly. I'm talking. Right. I'm talking. I don't know what happened to Boston. It, this fine classic liberals are fine. They used to look at both sides of the issue. They were the ones who would say you could say anything you want, free speech. Now they're the ones shut. The new gu- the new progressives are shutting it down, Stevie. That's that's what the, I'm the saying. Hypo- the hypocrisy is unbelievable. But you know what? Yeah. 
Joe Rogan warned me about you that I would be sucked into this political maze. No, that's it. That's all I wanted Watch to say about hands. that. That's all. Do, you know I'm doing LSD right now. You know that. You, you're actually, but I know you're on something because you're way more <laughs> relaxed than you normally I are. I can you know tell. You know what it is? Yeah, I Nick, do. It's called Vicodin. I've been, I've been doing this shit so long that I like having a good conversation. Yes. You don't want a guy coming on who's on all the time. You don't no, want that. No, no. That you would not. like somebody, however, who's reasonably funny, which I am not being. But let's go past that. <laughs> You're always funny, dude. I talked to Colin Quinn last night about you, and I and I just oh, said, I love Colin. I'm so proud of him. He's guy. Hey, brilliant. Did is your producer's name is Jason, isn't it? I think so. I called him Jack a few days ago. But is yes. he laughing at any of this? He's shit? He's laughing at all of it. Anything has come out of your mouth. He says you look like Elizabeth Warren with a goatee. He said that. No, I just said that. Um, so you want to see me not relax with that motherfucker, Jason? <laughs> Sweeney said to me the last time we were talking, he goes, uh, we were talking about how wild he was when he was young. And he goes, I used yeah. to beat guys up bigger than you on the way to a fight. On the way to a fight, Jason would be <laughs> what we call it a tune-up, a tune-up fight. <laughs> and that's no bullshit back then. Uh, uh -huh. Tell the people about the plot of the movie, because I want right, people to go the, see this. The, tell them. Oh, uh, yeah. Ahead. Well, they they have to buy it on uh, Amazon and iTunes, but they yeah. can rent it soon. Yeah. Well, eventually, I think it'll be on Netflix or something. But sure. uh, HBO comes to town. They want to use me, but the characters are too local. They say, get rid of the characters. So uh, my characters try to kill me. Then I go to my friends for advice, one of whom... Stephen Wright, I think this is interesting. I said, Stephen, will you do the movie? He said, yep, I'll do it. I have to write my own dialogue. I said, okay, that's fine. <laughs> then I got the crew, right, because I'm producing, <laughs> yeah. you know, camera, director, everybody. Right. You know how it is. Right. And then Stephen calls me. He said, meet me in the parking lot across from Walden Pond. Okay, boys, we're in South Boston. We got to go where he says, and he comes out of the woods and he does his whole thing. Boy, what an honor, though, to get him in it. He doesn't do it. He doesn't do movies. He could do movies. He he, he gets offered movies. He, picked, he doesn't do them. He picked, he does, he picked he, the location for his scene, too? Absolutely. He picked, he the, picked location. the location. He was in the woods near his house. I wish he you picked, let me do that. He picked the location, and he picked his own dialogue. And it was but really guys, funny. guys like us... We admire people who did it their own way, right? And right. that is definitely him. Oh, absolutely! You know? I hung out with him for a, uh, almost two weeks. Uh, Horace and Pete, Louis C.K. did this Horace and Pete thing. Uh, it was almost like a live play that he filmed. Brilliant series it, it, with uh, Edie Falco and and with wow. Steve Buscemi and Jessica Lang and Alan Alda. I got to actually work wow. with these people. You gotta see it, Steve. It's based on an Irish bard that's handed down from generation. It's dark. It's mean. It's funny, and uh, yeah, Stephen Wright and me hung out for almost two weeks, and yeah. I, he would laugh at everything coming out of my mouth, and he would make yeah. me laugh. And he's such a nice, down to earth, he really is. Uh, brilliant, he really is. funny. Boston is loaded with it. You gotta be on. I mean, come on, Stephen Good Wright, guys. you, Lenny Clark, Jay Leno, Jay, Conan O'Brien, Louis yeah. C.K., uh, Dane Cook. Um, Billy Burr. It, I mean, it goes on and on. You know, so, you know who I hung out with that was one of the joys of my life. I, I hung Zsa out Zsa with Zsa Gabor. Zsa, Zsa, yeah, that was nice. The first <laughs> night, and then after that, I no sleep. She had restless legs, and I said, "Get out." Uh, Peter Falk. Yes. Can I Peter take... Falk. Now, I, did I tell you the story about Peter Falk? Do you know the town that I lived in in New York that I just moved from? Yeah. There's a street called Peter Falk Way. He grew up about a mile from the house. Beautiful and, guy. And, Very uh, different than what you would think. So I did this movie with him. Yeah. Did I tell you this story? I'm going to tell you. I, I don't know. So I did this movie. It's called The Money Kings on video. You should get it. It's a good movie. Three weeks shoot. During the week, I'm doing the movie. And then the weekends, I'm going to the freaking Kowloon and Saugus, right, to tell jokes. So yeah. I'm going from everything to Chinese restaurant. Yeah. So he was watching this, and we, we would have great conversations about football, whatever. Right. And then at the end of the shoot, he says to me, you know, I've been in this business a long time. I've met a lot of people, Sweeney, and I got to tell you, you by far, by far, are the most fucked up human being <laughs> that I have ever met in my life. 
Yeah. And that's what makes you uh, the, the the that's what makes a great comic. I don't want to find if you're well adjusted, you're usually not very funny. That's how it works. Um, I know. Why why would you do this for a living if you if you're kind of like normal? Why well, would you do it? I I, I can see I, it as a hobby, but I tell we you do why it's extraordinary. Well, somebody asked me why I did comedy, and 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 somebody told me when I was like 14 years old, and I started to get interested in girls. They said if you can make a girl laugh, you can make her do anything. And then I wow. said, then I said, I got to get out of here. And they said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to buy exploding shoes and a seltzer bottle. <laughs> and uh, and but it doesn't work the other way. If a, a girl makes a guy laugh, she can't make us do anything. My wife asked me to, you know, load the dishwasher. I said, don't make me fucking laugh. Um, <laughs> but that's why I got into it. And no, but you're right. There's something a little and it sounds cliche, but there's something a little off when you say, I want to get in front of strangers and, hey, look at me. I'm fucking funny. You didn't get enough attention. I was the middle child. I don't think I got enough attention. Uh, the middle child of 36. So uh, that's, that's, that's I was 18. That's, that's 18. That's yeah. no attention whatsoever. <laughs> so. That's nothing. That's attention <laughs> deficit right there. But but I'm proud of you, Stevie, because you, you were, I mean, uh, you know, heavy into the, the drugs and stuff like everybody in Boston, the comedy scene. But I couldn't believe I hadn't seen you in 10 years when I came and met you, ran into you, I don't know, 15 years ago doing Comics Come Home. You had already been clean and sober for years. And, and uh, I'm proud that they made this movie. It's well-deserved. Seriously. <laughs> Thank it's well-deserved. And uh, you are the reason I got into this. So uh, Can I just I disagree with you what enough. you said about the women? My experience is, yeah. George Carlin said this, by the way. He said... If, for a woman to go home with the ma with a comedian, it's like going home with the monkey with a hurdy gurdy birth <laughs> guy. It's like it, it, like I went out with a woman. I I swear to God, it's like an hour into it. When are you gonna? And I horrible, beautiful girl, horrible Boston accent. Yeah. When are you gonna be funny? Jesus. When are you gonna start being funny? <laughs> or they do your lines <laughs> while you're eating. Or, just horrible. <laughs> You know, what am but, I going to uh, stop being funny when I take my pants off? You'll be laughing your balls off. <clears throat> not me. Not me. When uh, my pants go down. Yeah. So many women have said to me, wow, I can't believe you're white. <laughs> That's because you have black nylons on. Hey, guys, don't forget to like me on uh, Facebook, my Facebook page. It's much easier to like me in person. And go to nickdip.com. you get all my tour dates. And uh, I don't know what else. I wish this whole fucking thing was over with the computers. All right? I'll see you at a club live.